Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Today we're going to make cheesy pasta. Now to do that we're going to make an all-in-one starch based sauce where we use flour as a thickening agent to thicken the sauce and that uses a process called gelatinization but we'll get into that a bit more later on. So the ingredients we've got are quite straightforward. Here we have 250 grams of pasta. We're going to be using a spoonful of flour, about 25 grams. We're going to be using a spoonful of, of fat or butter, again about 25 grams. And we're going to use 250 mils of milk. And finally, for flavour, we're going to add uh, about 100 grams of cheese plus a little bit of salt and pepper. So, first things first, it may seem obvious. So I've, put, I've boiled the kettle, I've put some boiling water in, and we're going to add our pasta to boiling water. Pasta needs to be added to boiling water, um, so it can cut out cooking straight away. Otherwise, um, it'll take, it will be in there and slowly cooking, which can sometimes make the pasta a bit mushy. By way of a visual tip, when cooking, if I see big bubbles, that's boiling. If I see small bubbles, that's simmering. We give the pasta a quick stir, to make sure none of it sticks to the bottom. And I leave the cook, about 12 minutes. Next up we're going to make our sauce and this really couldn't be easier. Into our pan we add about 25 grams of fat, about a dessert spoonful. Next we add a spoonful of flour. That's going to be a thickening agent that thickens our sauce. And finally we add in 250 ml of milk. Now it's very important when making a starch based sauce that we add our starch, i.e. the flour, to a cold liquid. If we add our flour straight into a hot liquid, then it will start to cook around the outside and, and uh, very quickly, and the inside will be dry and floury and you'll have big lumps. So as this is slowly heating up, I'm using my whisk to just break up little flour blobs. So as it heats up, there's no lumps. And while this is just heating up, it gives me a chance to tell you a little bit about the functions of the ingredients and what's happening as we're making our sauce. We don't have much time because it'll get thick pretty quick. So we're making a starch based sauce and what this does, it takes us through an active way the process of something called gelatinization. That's where, that's where flour is used as a thickening agent. So how does it work? Well, stage number one, when you put flour into a cold liquid, it doesn't dissolve, it just clumps together initially, floats around, and then falls to the bottom. As the temperature rises now, what starts to happen is that the walls around each one of the individual flower particles start to soften, and slowly, the flower particles start to absorb water. That happens at around 60 degrees. Next, as the temperature rises, up to 80 degrees, the flour particles absorb up to five times their normal size of water until they can't absorb any more and then they burst. And as they burst, they release starch which is held within the flour particle into the liquid. And that's what thickens it. So once at the temperature, 80 degrees, it will start to thicken very, very rapidly. But we need to leave it cooking uh, on, a, on a simmer for a bit longer and what it does it cooks out some of the raw flavour of the flour. At this stage now we can also add a few uh, a bit of seasoning. Now I encourage you to try and experiment with different types of seasonings whatever you like. Into this one I'm adding a bit of thyme, a little bit of garlic and then I'm going to add something a little bit unusual and a little bit of curry powder. just to give my sauce a bit of a different flavour. I'm going to reduce the heat down and we're going to cook that off for about two or three minutes. So my sauce is done now. It's nice and a nice consistency, nice and thick. And it smells really, really good. So into my sauce, I'm adding about 100 grams of cheese. You can use more or less according to how much you like cheese. 
In this particular dish I'm using a vegan cheese I got from Tesco, which is actually pretty good. It's Tesco's own brand from their free from range. So our sauce is done now, let's check on our pasta. So here we are, our pasta is looking pretty good, but let me show you how to check if the pasta is done. And despite what some of my students might think, you don't check pasta by throwing a kick against the window to see if it sticks. There's two main ways to check to see our pasta is done. One way is we take a bite and see. Mm, that tastes pretty good. Another way is to get our pasta and we cut it in half. And if we can look inside and see any trace of white, then that means the water hasn't quite got through to the centre of the pasta and he's cooking a bit more. This pasta is just fine. So let's move to the next stage. So next, over the sink, I'm going to drain my pasta. Tip, if I drain my pasta and don't put it back inside, I've only really had water in this, so this is going to be really easy to wash out. So I drain my pasta. And now I'm going to add the pasta into the cheese sauce. So here we are, we've added our pasta to our cheese sauce, and it looks and smells amazing. So we have a choice. Our pasta is fully mixed in with our sauce, so we can either eat it straight like this, plate it up, or we can put it in another container and we can bake it, and then that'll give us a pasta bake. I'm gonna plate it up. So here we have it, our finished product. A delicious, cheesy pasta. I can have it as it is now, or we can bake it in the oven and get a pasta bake. Let's taste it. Mm. Really good. You can taste the flavour of the cheese coming through very, very subtly, it's a subtle cheese. A little bit of curry coming through. It's very, very nice. It's very aromatic, lovely. So once again, thanks for watching Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get up to date on all the latest videos. Food Tech 101 is now on Facebook, so pop by there and check us out. And Food Tech 101 is also on Instagram. My name is Mr. Liebert, or you can call me sir.